All right, guys, I got two engines in front of me. What you're looking at is actually my US domestic model 2005 WRX engine right here to my right. And over here to my left is actually the new 2002 to 2003 JDM EJ207 engine. And this engine has got the long block that I'm gonna use, but to pass emissions here in California, I'm gonna have to strip a bunch of the parts off this engine, mostly the intake manifold and a bunch of the sensors and the wiring for the engine. And I'm gonna grab the intake manifold off my US domestic model engine that has a blown short block. And I'm gonna move that intake manifold and all those emission components from my US domestic model 05 two liter to that 2002 to 2003 JDM two liter. So that's what the plan is for today. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and motorsport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Okay, here's an update. Basically what I've done is I've gone ahead and pulled the turbo off. I've actually got that over here on my little shop table. So I've pulled the turbo off. I've actually got my coolant expansion tank right here removed as well. So both those are removed. And I've also removed all eight of these intake manifold bolts. So this intake manifold and the entire assembly with the fuel rails and the TGV valves, and then there's also a couple coolant lines right here to the throttle body you wanna remove, and a couple other miscellaneous lines like your PCV hoses as well. So once you've removed all the lines and you remove those eight intake manifold bolts, you should be able to remove this entire assembly as one unit and then set it aside. All right, let's go ahead and lift this intake manifold off with the turbo inlet and the throttle body and basically this research valve and your TGVs and your fuel rails, basically everything is one big assembly, should be able to come off. And I'm actually including the entire wiring harness and my coil packs. I guess I can remove these coil packs first. Let me remove these coil packs. Now we continue and we should be able to lift the sucker off and the sucker should come off as one unit. Bam, just like that. Not bad at all. Pretty easy when you get it all Right. All right, guys, continuing this disassembly and breakdown of this US domestic model EJ205. As you guys can see, I've got the intake manifold removed. I actually removed that coolant crossover pipe as well. I've removed the PCV system and I've removed the timing covers. So basically this thing is completely stripped down. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to use everything. I'm basically gonna strip down everything off the short block and then eventually break down the short block and rebuild it or send it to a machine shop to get rebuilt. And the engine is completely stripped down. That's right, guys. As you can see, I got the heads off. I got the flywheel off. I got everything stripped off this engine. This is that US domestic model EJ205 engine that basically had a bad cylinder in number four. So this sucker is stripped down and I'm gonna save it for a future build or for a future project. But this video is about getting your JDM engine to pass emissions in the United States, specifically for California emissions. And that's where this red intake manifold comes in. Basically, the JDM intake manifold that you can see over there, that's my JDM EJ207 intake manifold. That intake manifold for the JDM cars actually has TGV deletes. And that's gonna be a problem, guys, because the TGV deletes is gonna be a problem for the US domestic model ECU. That's the first thing you have to switch out. You have to switch out your TGVs into this setup. No matter which intake manifold you use, you're gonna need to use those TGVs if you're gonna use the US domestic model ECU. And that ECU is what's gonna store all the emissions equipment and all the sensor information. So that's really what controls everything, is your ECU. And your US mess model ECU is definitely gonna be looking for those TGVs. So that's the first thing you're definitely gonna have to swap out is those TGVs. The next thing you might have to swap out if you use that US mess model ECU is all the sensors that the ECU really needs to control that engine. On this EJ207 engine, for example, the camshaft sensor, the crankshaft sensor, the NOx sensor, or the oil pressure sensor, they're all virtually identical on the JDM engine versus the US mess model engine. But a lot of JDM engines will actually use a different crankshaft sensor or a different camshaft sensor or a different NOx sensor. So that's the next thing you gotta have to check out, guys. Make sure you use the correct NOx sensor, crankshaft sensor, and camshaft sensor for whatever ECU will be managing that engine. And then coolant crossover pipe, that's another one we should mention. Coolant crossover pipe has a temperature sensor in it. And you definitely also need to use a temperature sensor that corresponds to the ECU that you're using for this engine, which is gonna be the US domestic model ECU. And if you're gonna swap over that coolant temperature sensor, you might as well swap over the whole coolant crossover pipe because the US domestic model coolant crossover pipes actually route that heater core hose in a better location. 
So I think it's actually easier and more preferential to use a US domestic model crossover pipe anyways. Okay guys, and the next thing you wanna think about is actually the turbo inlet. These are virtually identical as far as the dimensions and the shape and they're having this little extra port right here for the research valve. But I did notice that the US domestic model one actually has this little port right here for the PCB system. And that's another thing you have to think about switching over if your ECU needs to see that signal. This is actually the US domestic model style little PCV system. And it actually has a little port right here and a little sensor right here that actually sends a signal to the US domestic model ECU monitoring your PCV system. If I compare it to the JDM one right here, this is a JDM little PCV port. This one also connects to the top of your crankcase, but this one actually doesn't have a little sensor on it. And because of that, the little turbo inlet tube is slightly different also and doesn't have a little mount for the little sensor. So the turbo inlet tube is a little different on these JDM engines versus the US domestic model engines. So that's basically all the different sensors you're gonna have to swap over guys. But if you're swapping over sensors, that also means you need to swap over your wiring harness. So you're also gonna wanna swap over your engine wiring harness from that US domestic model engine to the JDM engine because that US domestic model wiring harness will connect to all the US domestic model sensors and connect to your US domestic model ECU. So that's the last piece in the puzzle is you're gonna to have to use that US mesk model engine wiring harness to connect everything and make the ECU talk to all the sensors. Which actually brings up one little interesting side note. That actually means that the US mesk model ECU doesn't have the ability to control these AVCS cam gears, which kind of sucks guys. That basically means you're not gonna be able to use your AVCS system from EJ207 when you're running it with that US mesk model EJ205 ECU, at least with a factory tune and a completely factory setup. So for passing emissions and passing the bar inspection, you basically have to forego using your AVCS for your intake cams for the time being. And that's basically it. If you can convert that JDM short block or long block over to a US domestic model vehicle so you can pass emissions or pass a bar inspection. Stay tuned for one of my next videos, guys, where I dive into all the differences between this EJ205 engine and the JDM EJ207 engine. There's actually a lot of little subtle differences. And if you guys are thinking about ever picking up an EJ207 engine, this definitely be a good video for you guys to check out. All right guys, and that's my overview on what you need to do to make your EJ207 emissions smog legal and bar legal here in California, or really emissions legal for any state in the United States. This will really help you guys figure out exactly what pieces you need to swap over to that new engine to get it to pass all the emissions requirements. So thanks for checking out the video guys, I really appreciate it. My name's Luke, you guys are watching the Super Only channel. Until next time guys, later.